my push rod. I can't really see my push rod right here, okay? But my push rod appears to be securely attached to my slack adjuster. Clevis pin and Carter pin are in place. My push rod, this is your Clevis pin, right here, okay? And on the other end of the Clevis pin is a Carter pin. Clevis pin is what mounts the uh, push, rod. push rod to the slack mm -hmm. adjuster, okay? And the Carter pin, C-O-T-T-E-R, Cotter pin, is what keeps the Clevis pin from falling out. There's a car okay. on the top. Oh, right there. Duh. Okay. The one. What a push rod is. Right here. That's oh, where okay. he pointed to. Oh, the push rod. Uh-huh. Okay. So, my push rod is straight. It's not bent or broken, cracked or damaged. Securely mounted to my slack adjuster, Carter pin and Clevis pin are in place, okay? Which takes me to my slack adjuster itself. You need me to move? No. Clevis? That's my, that's my slack adjuster. My slack adjuster is securely mounted at the top and the bottom. It's not broken. It's not cracked, shows no weld or repair. Hmm. It is securely mounted. All the clevis pins, carter pins, C clamps, mounting hardware are in place. And it is well greased. And when pulled by hand, my push rod and slack adjuster does not move more than one inch. Okay? I'm pull by hand. My clevis, excuse me, my uh, push rod and slack adjuster does not move more, does not move more than one inch. When pulled by There's hand, some my discrepancies about it. which one when needs to be talked about moving one inch. The, which one moves the one inch? The push rod or the or the slack adjuster. So if you tell them the push rod and the slack adjuster does not move more than one inch, you got both of them covered. Okay. All right. Okay. Two, Two birds, one stone. The push rod, they both move the same because they're hooked together. But okay. What you get when you get bureaucrats. Okay. Uh, so that brings us in here to our brake drum and shoes. Put it under first. Nah, I'll get it here in a minute. I uh, in I cannot see my brake drum and shoes because I have a cover over it. But if I could see inside my cover. I would be looking that my brake drums are securely mounted. They're not missing any nuts or bolts. There's no rust trails to indicate anything was loose. The drum itself is not cracked, welded, repaired. There's no heat distortion or warpage. My brake shoes have good thickness of the pad, at least a quarter of an inch. They're not wore dangerously thin. And I see no oil or grease on my brake drum, oil or grease contaminants on my brake drum or shoe. Okay? Now you can actually see your drum from out here. That is actually your brake drum inside there. You can see it from through the holes, okay? And when we get here to the back, we'll actually be able to see it. The backs don't have covers on them, okay? So that is my braking system, okay? Now I'm going to move to my tire, okay? I'm going to start here with the 
face of my tire. I'm looking that I have even tread wear across the face of the tire. It's not wearing off to one side. I'm looking that I have at least 432, 430 seconds tread on the front tire. Will be 230 seconds from here on back. Okay, but 430 seconds tread on the front tire. I'm looking at the inner and outer side walls of the tire. I'm looking for any cuts, bumps, bruises, blemishes, or sidewall defects, and it appears to be free of all. I'm looking here at my valve stem. My valve stem appears to be straight. It does have a safety cap. And the tire pressure was checked with an air gauge this morning, and it is at manufactured recommended specifications of 105 pounds. Move down to my rim. I'm looking at the inside and outside of my rim. I'm looking at it is not cracked, welded, okay? There is no rust trails that would indicate any looseness. There's no signs of bends, no damage no repair so it's not cracked bent damaged repairs no illegal welds my rim appears to be in good working order i'm also looking here on my rim to see that i don't have any cracks from lug bolt hole to lug bolt hole or from lug bolt hole to the center that is where your rim is going to crack first okay is lug bolt hole to lug bolt hole or lug bolt hole to center Okay, other than that, you're looking for any kind of bend where they've hit a curb with it, damage or anything like that. Moves me to my lug nuts. All my lug nuts are present. They're tight. I don't see any rust trails coming from the lug nut that would indicate any looseness. I don't see any oblonging of the lug bolt holes that would indicate that the rim had been run loose. Oblonging? Oblong. Does that mean like we're wiggle back and forth and make a... Okay. Oblong. Got it. Okay. okay. That brings me down here to my hub seal. Okay. My hub oil seal. All my mounting bolts are present and tight. I don't see any leakage out of my hub seal. And I have an adequate amount of oil in my hub seal. Okay. How do you see that? Do you say... Where's it, how do I know that I have an adequate amount of oil in my hub bolts? Because I just told you you did. Okay. No, really. <laughs> you can, if this glass was clean, you could see the level okay. right there. But I do not want y'all pulling these caps out, okay? Got it. Uh, because they get brittle. I mean, it's like me a that. sight glass kind of thing. It is a sight glass, okay. okay. Them rubber plugs get hard, and I can already tell by feeling that one that it's hard and those windows get brittle and you'll usually get it out and when you go to put it back in you'll usually break the window because those rubbers get hot now how this works is if you was to look right here in the center of that you'll see a very very small hole yeah okay and what happens is as that hub heats up it generates heat causes pressure that little hole is a vent hole to let the pressure get out well they will get stopped up with oil okay and then you'll start seeing them leak out around Got here it. because they can't get the pressure out of them so they start pushing oil out around the plug like and most of the screen. time all that is is just the vent hole of the plug up okay all right so to recap, okay, now listen, we're going to recap on four components of our engine, right, we covered our four fluids, right, covered all the other things, so on my steering, okay, basically on my steering I have, again, four components, okay, all right, counting the steering linkage as one component, okay, all right, I've got my Steering shaft, my connection, my steering box, my steering linkage, which is pitman arm, 
drag link or idler on, axle arm, and tie rod. Tie rod. Okay, that's my four. Steering shaft, steering connection, steering box, and then there actually is four components to my steering linkage. Okay, takes me to my brake suspension. Oh, suspension. Okay, and my front and my rear spring hanger. My leaf springs, my U bolts, and my shock absorbers. Okay, takes me to my brakes. I have my air chamber, excuse me, my air hose, my brake chamber, my slack adjuster, okay, push rod, and my drum in my shoes. Okay, brings me to my tire. My tire has three components to it. Tread, condition, and pressure, TCP. Tread, condition, and pressure. Tread is 430 seconds. Condition covers my even wear across the face of the tire, sidewalls for my damage, and my valve stem being straight in a cap, okay? And then pressure is, I checked it with an air gauge this morning and it was at manufacturer's recommended specifications of 105 pounds, okay? My rims, my lug nuts, and my hub seat, okay? All right. Now, if I had a Form A, I would be done after I closed my hood. Then I would go do my cuff lead system, and then I would go inside and do my internal checks and my startup checks, okay? But we have a full form, so we're continuing on. Close that, please. If we had a form B, okay, don't forget to get your marker lights, turn signal and your exhaust system is a form B okay your exhaust system is not on form A I covered it over there because I'm doing a full form okay but the exhaust system is on form B okay all right but I'm doing a full form so I'm gonna move on down I'm gonna start here with my mirrors they're properly mounted all the mounting arms are properly attached they're not bent, they're not broken, there's no rust trails, there's no missing mounting bolts. My mirrors appear to be securely mounted to the frame. They're not cracked, they're not broken, there's no uh, smoking around the glass. Mirrors appear to be in proper working order. Moves me here to my door. Looking here at my door, I want to check that my latch opens. And it locks securely. I want to check that all my hinges are securely attached. The door seems to be operating properly. And I'm looking at my door seal. My door seal, what of it is still left, appears to be functioning properly. But I am missing the bottom part of my door seal. My door appears to be in good working order. Okay. Coming on back here now, I do want to go ahead and just mention this battery box here. As for the steps, they are securely mounted. There's no oil or grease or contaminants on my steps that may cause me to slip or fall. And my steps appear to be in good working order. Coming back here to my fuel tank, okay. First, I want to start off at my fuel tank mounting are securely mounted to the frame. The straps that go around my fuel tank are securely fastened and tight. They're not missing any nuts or bolts. No rust trail that would indicate anything was loose. And the rubber in between my straps that protect my tank from rubbing and chafing are in place and uh, not pushed out in good working order. Leads me to my steps. Here again, my steps are properly mounted. They're not loose. There's no missing nuts or bolts. 
and there's no grease or oil or anything that would cause me to slip or fall. My fuel tank itself, I'm looking at my cap. It is securely fastened and tight. There's no leakage around my cap. My cap seal appears to be working properly. I'm looking underneath my tank, I don't see any signs of leakage. Underneath my tank, I don't see any din, dings, dents, holes, or damage to my fuel tank itself. Okay? That's going to take me here to my frame. I'm looking at my frame. I'm looking for any broken parts or pieces, any weld or repair mark. I'm looking for any missing nuts or bolts or any signs of rust trails from any of the nuts or bolt that would indicate anything was loose. This is my cross member. I'm looking at my cross member to make sure that it is securely mounted. It's not cracked, welded, repaired. There's no uh, cracks or broke part to it. I don't see any rust trails around any of the mounting bolts that would indicate that anything was loose. My frame appears to be in good working order. That takes me up here to my catwalk. My catwalk is securely attached to the frame. There's no uh, rust trail that would indicate anything was loose. The catwalk itself is properly mounted and there's no oil or grease contaminants or anything strapped down to my catwalk that may cause me to slip or fall, okay? All right. Moving on back here, now we're only going to do one of these axles, okay? And I'm sure they will have you do the rear axle, yes. While you were there, you wouldn't do your electrical and your airlines and... Part of coupling. Oh, sorry, you correct. Okay, part of coupling. Okay, I'll get that when I do my coupling, okay? Now, if you had a full form and you wanted to do them now, that's perfectly okay, okay? If you had a form B and you wanted to do it now, that was purposeful, perfectly okay. Okay. Whenever they're gonna, you know, they're gonna lead you around of what you need to do, but they're not really gonna tell you no, you can't do that because that's out of order. If you go ahead and do your airlines while you're right there, that's okay, fine. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna come in down here. I can get down today. Do you want a book to press on for your knee? Okay, from back here, I'm going to look at my front spring hanger. Let me get back out here so I can show y'all this component. Looking at my front spring hanger and my rear spring hanger, I'm seeing that all my mounting bolts are present and tight. There's no rust trails to indicate anything was loose. The spring mounts are not cracked, welded, repaired, or broken. Appear to be in good working order. While I'm right here, this is a torque rod, okay, or torque arm, torsion rod, or torsion arm. Okay, I'm looking that the front and the rear mounting bolts are securely mounted. There's no rust trails that would indicate anything was loose. The bushings at the front and the back. I'm going to get out of here just a second. I'm trying to figure out how to stick this rod to it. at the front and the rear of the torque arm are securely in place. They're not ripped or torn or pushed out. The pushing, the, out. Be careful. The pushing is a bigger part around that rod. Excuse me? The rod is here uh -huh. and there's something bigger around it. That's the pushing. The thing is that's your mounting point. See the bolt well, right here in the point. front? Yeah. There's a bolt that goes back there through the rear. What do you that? call that? Torque arm. Torque. 
and I'll explain what it's for here in a minute. Let me go through the adjustment. Let me do it. So my torque arm is securely mounted at both ends. There's not missing any nuts or bolts, no rut trail that would indicate anything was loose. The bushings at each end appear to be good serviceable, they're not pushed out, cracked, or broken. The torque rod itself appears to be straight. It's not cracked or broken, shows no damage, and the adjustment bolts and clamps are securely fastened and tight. No rust trail that would indicate any damage. Now, if we was to go around and look at the other side, torque arm, it is a solid rod, okay? On this side, it's an adjustable rod. The torque rod has two functions, okay? And this is just for general knowledge, this is not CDL. The torque rod, every one of these axles on this truck and trailer are lineable. That means they can be adjusted, okay? So, like, if you have a rear wheel drive vehicle car now, you take it and you have the front end aligned so the truck, so the car don't pull from one side or the other, your tires wear even. If you have a front wheel drive, usually you have the rear axle aligned now, okay? Well, every axle on this truck is lineable, okay? It's adjustable. So what they do is, they, of course, line the front axle up so it doesn't pull. They need to line both of these axles up in line with the front axle and the, and the frame so you get even tire wear, okay? So one's not caught like this and like this, which is going to wear the tires off at an angle. And then have you ever followed a trailer and it looked like it was going down the road a little crooked from the truck? It's called dog legging. That's called, most of the time, it's to the right side. That's called they hit curved with it and it's push that right side back, okay? But they are also lineable, so they get, they, they're lineable to the kingpin itself. So the trailer travels straight down the road and it does it dog leg off to one side or the other so it doesn't wear the tires uneven. That's one purpose of it. But the reason it's called a torque rod or a torsion arm is right now all the way to this vehicle is right here on these tires, okay? So when you let the clutch out and that drive shaft starts spinning, the first thing, because all the weight is on the tires and there's basically no weight on that axle, the first thing it's gonna try to do is rotate the axle without rotating the tires because it has less pressure on it. That torque arm is to take that torque out and to keep it from rotating the axle where it makes the tires turn, okay? That's where the name torque rod or torsion rod comes from, okay? So it, it has two functions, okay? It is part of the alignment function, but its main function is to take the torque out of the axle so you don't break universal joints and the axle doesn't spin the tires roll, okay? You okay. said that this side is adjustable, but the other side was a Walk straight around there and look at the other side. No, no, no. So would we in the... No. no? You, just, uh, you do it just like I did it, okay? Okay. Right, but look, walk around here to the other side. Not broken, welded, repaired, bent, or damaged, okay? Straight right but on this side. But these stay solid, and they adjust the other side. Okay. Okay. What is this thing called right here again? This whole thing right here. Well, if you really want to know the proper name for it, it's an equalizer. Okay. But we're going to call it a front spring mount. Okay. It's an equalizer front spring mount. Okay. Actually, on a twin screw tractor spring rod, you have Back up. a front spring mount. The equalizer is actually your rear spring mount for your front spring and your front spring mount for your rear spring. And then you have another spring mount at the back, okay? Okay. And what that does is it equalizes the weight out to each one of those springs. And you can call it e e equalizer? You could call it an equalizer if you mm -hmm. want to, um, but okay. We don't need it on the test, though. Ah, solid. Right. On the front, and they'll have, so you have a torque rod torque or rod. torsion rod at each wheel location. All right. Scratch. 
if he asks me in the room, I don't know what that is. I'll ask a question. So, back here on my suspension here again, I have my front spring mount and my rear spring mount, okay? I have my torque rod. I have my lead spring. My lead spring is securely mounted at both ends. Now, you notice up there on that front spring, we basically had pivot pins mm -hmm. at each end. This one we don't, okay? It's just a different type of spring because it's suspended. So on this one, all I'm gonna talk about is that my lead spring is not spread, cracked, broken. There's no missing lead springs. There's no rust trails that would end th indicate anything is cracked or broken. Nothing has been welded or repaired, okay? Because if you look back here at the back of this lead spring, you see how you just see the straight part of the lead spring? Okay, it does not have the round bushings that hold each part of the spring, okay? Only a front spring does and it's not breathable either, okay? Ah, uh, these are more called like a slipper spring, okay? Ah, uh, can I get in there? Yes, or unless you want to take over from me? Ah, uh, now I want to come in here and I want to look at my U-bolts. My U-bolts are present, they're tight, all the mounting bolts are present and tight. Y'all can come around here, get into the other side so you can see. Okay. There's no rust trails that would indicate anything was loose. I'm looking at my U-bolts that they're not cracked, welded, repaired, broken, or damaged. Okay. So that covers my suspension. Front spring mount, rear spring mount, torque arm, lead spring, U-bolt. The U-bolt, it's a U-bolt thing that goes sideways instead of up and down. I've got, no, that, that, no. I've got my, I got my rod right here on oh, it. The long. It's a different looking U-bolt. No, it looks That's exactly good. like the front one. It's just longer. Okay. All right, now, I'm back here. I'm looking, moving to my brakes, okay? Back here, I have two brake hoses, okay? I'm checking both my brake hoses. They appear to be securely mounted at both ends. They're not rubbed, chafed, spliced, or damaged, and I hear no audible sounds of air leak out of my brake hoses. That takes me to my brake chamber. My brake chamber is securely mounted. Now, you're gonna be down here like this, okay? And you're talking about this side, but you can look at this side and get a little better of a view of your components, okay? Or you can lay down under here and get you a good look at these components. If I lay down, I might go to sleep. <laughs> so I'm looking at my mounting bolts. They're properly mounted. There's no rust trails that indicate anything was loose. I'm looking at the chamber itself. I don't see any bent, no cracks, no holes, no damage. I don't see any welder repair marks to my chamber. My band clamp, now one of these clamps here, this clamp right here, does not have a band clamp. It's crimped, okay, from the factory. The back one does have a band clamp, okay. My band clamp bolt is present and tight. I don't see any rust trails around it. I don't hear any audible air leaks out of my brake chamber. I can see my push rod on this one a little better. My push rod appears to be straight. It's not cracked, bent, broken, or damaged. It is securely mounted to my slack adjuster. Clevis and Carter pin is in place. Okay. My slack adjuster is securely mounted. It has no signs of damage. It's not cracked, welded, or repaired. All the mounting hardware is in place. My C-clip up here that holds my Slack adjuster to my S cam. The what clip? C clip. Oh, okay. And my bottom is mounted to my push rod with my clevis pin and carter pin. The slack adjuster is properly greased. And when pulled by hand, my push rod and my slack adjuster should not move more than one inch. Now, like I said, back here, 
we can get a better look at our brake drum and our brake shoes. My, let me get out of here so y'all can look. Welded, repaired. There's no sign of heat distortion or warpage. My brake shoes are not worn dangerously thin. They have at least a quarter of an inch of pad. And I have no oil or grease contaminants on my drum or shoes. Okay?